Hey guys, Jerry with Backwards Animation, and today we're going to be talking about head rotations. I'm going to be using joysticks and sliders, like I always do, and we're going to create a really cool and easy head rig. Uh, we're going to get some good rotation in it, and I'm going to show you my process on how I achieve that. Now, this is part of a much larger course, so if you want to see the whole video on how I designed and rigged this character, click the link below and take my Skillshare course. Um, if you click the link below, I think you get like 20% off or something, or there's, there's something in it for you if you use my link. Uh, and there's also something in it for me. I get some perks. But feel free to click that link and watch the whole video if you want. Otherwise, you get to watch how I created a head rig. So, let's get into it. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to be doing something with uh, joysticks and sliders. So if you don't have it, that's okay. But if you do, this will be a quick crash course on how to use it and how to get some really cool um, head rotations with it. So starting off, I'm going to solo everything in just the, in the face. So we'll do hair all the way down to face. And I'm going to solo. And in fact, maybe I'll change the colors so we can see, you know, I'll do green. All right. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is when using joysticks and sliders, there are five key frames that we need to make. Starting here at frame zero is your neutral pose, and then you go forward um, four more frames and you create your poses in each of those keyframes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna key the position of the face. I'll key the position of the ears and hold shift S and I'll also keyframe the scale of the ears. The eyes, um, let me think about how I wanna do the eyes. Typically when I do a rig, I like to create compositions for everything so that they're nested in their own little folder or their own little composition. Uh, and it makes it easier to manage. But for this one, I'm gonna try something different. I wanna see if we don't put things in composition, if it makes it easier on the computer to actually animate a character because if you've, if you've created a few rigs on your own, you might find that some of these rigs can be very labor intensive on your computer, meaning there's a lot of lag. So if you move an arm or try to do a blink, it can take a little while to actually see the result of what you've done. Um, and that is just not a very conducive way to animate. If things are very slow and it takes you a few seconds to actually move an arm into position, it doesn't make it fun to animate. So I'm gonna to try to find a way to alleviate that problem. And I'm gonna see if we can do everything in one composition. Um, and we'll see how it works. So I might be doing some thought process on my own just to figure out how to do it. But bear with me and I think it might be pretty cool. So I'm gonna parent the pupils to the eyes and I'm gonna key the position of the eyes. Um, and I might key the scale as well, I don't know. Uh, next we're gonna change the nose around too, so I'll, for the nose I think I might do a path shape. So I'll key the path shape. The mouth I'm gonna key the position, so we'll go P, whoops, key that. The eyebrows we will key the position, and the hair we're actually going to key the path, not the position. All right, so that's looking pretty good. We have everything that needs to be keyed, keyed. So hit U on the keyboard, and it's going to pull up all of your keyframes. We can go and pull this up a little bit. Okay. So next, your character will be looking to the left. So we're going to set up all of our 
um, positions for the left turn. So you can start doing some stuff like the mouth will move over, uh, the face will move over just a little bit. The ear, this ear will move forward and this ear will move back. Um, one thing I should have mentioned, if you are going to be adjusting the scale, make sure you hit Y on the, the keyboard and move your anchor points to the middle of your object. Um, otherwise, you can have some issues down the road. But I'm not going to worry about it right now because I don't necessarily need to be animating anything like that. All right, next we'll pull the pupils over. And you can see the hair is covering the eyes. So a way around that is your hair can go below um, your some of your face features. So then next what we'll do, and this is where it gets a little tricky, is now we're going to be adjusting the hair path. So how will the hair look when you turn your head to the left? Well. Let's play around with it and find out. I like to hold shift when I move these points because they don't move up and down. Because we're doing a lateral move, they only move per perpendicular to this. Okay, so make sure you hold shift when you move everything over. So this will come over and we're just gonna flatten these out. This will come in maybe a little bit. All right, next we'll move this, eh, maybe we'll do this. Move this forward. All right, that looks pretty good. Everything looks good except this little guy right here. Maybe I'll move that into. All right, now let's move over to, what do we got? The nose. All right, so we're changing the path of the nose. So using joysticks and sliders, this is where it gets a little labor intensive, is if you're animating a lot of path shapes, you're going to start to see um, a very slow, slow process in your computer. When you animate just a position or a scale, it's okay. It's not that bad. But having a lot of shape layers to move like this, you're gonna possibly start to slow down your computer quite a bit. Let's see how that nose looks. It's not too bad, maybe it stretches out a little too far. Does that look all right? I don't know. You know, maybe with this one, I'll move this up. And this down like this. This is where you get to kind of have fun with it and see what is your character, what do their profiles look like? <clears throat> and to be honest, I don't know if that nose is gonna work when we turn it but we'll give it a shot and see how it does. All right, and then finally, the eyebrows move over the eyes. All right, not too bad. I see a little break in the hair right here. I wanna fix that. So we can move it down a little bit. All right, looks pretty good. Now we get to mirror everything to the other side. Um, if you do control C, I'm not going to get into that just yet. So now we've pasted it and we want to move it in the opposite direction. 
And I'm sorry if this is gonna confuse us now because your anchor point kind of plays a role in this, but you can see that when we move to the left, we go this far and we move to the right, we try to go the same distance. So what we'll do is we'll come back to the face, control C back to the center and we'll move it over. That's too far. Oops. We'll move it over to about the same distance. All right, so then this guy, we'll move back. And this guy will move forward. That works pretty good. Now the hair, what we're gonna do is paste the original origin. And then we'll start to move these guys over. We'll flatten out some of these bumps. Move this in just a little bit. Move this over. Okay, so that'll go over there. So move over. All right, looks pretty good. The hair is moving nicely back and forth. I like that. All right, next the eyes will come over. Again, we want to try to make sure that it is the same distance from the center and the left and the right. Okay, now our nose, we're going to put it back into its original position, and then I'm gonna try to rotate it, or not rotate it, but move it around so that it fits nicely like it did before. And then we'll get to kind of move it around back and forth to see how it looks. And this looks like it comes up a little bit. This definitely gets lower down here. You know, I kind of like, I like this shape better. It's got kind of like a S curve to it a little bit. So maybe I'll try to do or replicate it over here. All right, it looks pretty good. I think this one is close, but it's not quite. Yeah, it's good. I like it. All right. So we have a nose that moves around. What do we got now? The mouth. All right, we'll move the mouth over. That looks pretty good. Now don't worry about the ears just yet. You can see that they don't quite go behind the head yet. I think I'll pull this one out. Okay, so we have a left and a right movement. The next one that follows um, will be our up position. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the keyframes to their original neutral pose. All right. And then starting with the face, I'll move it up just a little bit this ear will come up, this ear will come up, the hair will move the path around. So these will probably mellow down a little. This might actually come up. 
these forehead parts will come up and they'll probably change inward. Maybe not too much inward. Okay, that'll probably come down. All right, that might be good enough. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to look, but we'll find out. I think maybe we'll pull these sideburns up a little bit too. All right, good enough. All right, next we'll pull the eyes up. Then we'll do nose up. This one we can actually just do the path, so we'll hold Shift P on our keyboard. Make sure you key the position for all of your frames, and then on this one we can move it upward. All right, I hope that made sense. So even though we're not changing the position for nose frame one, and we're not cha changing the position here or the position here, they still need keyframes in order for the plugin to work. And then finally on this frame, we can move it up, move the position up. Um, it's just how the plugin works, so just gotta deal with it. All right, next, the eyebrows will come up too. They can even come up above the hair. That's fine. All right, that looks like a good head movement up. I like it. All right, finally, we get to do the head rotate down. So I'm going to copy and paste all my keyframes um, to the final frame. And now we're going to move the head down a little bit. So we'll go like that, and then the ears, I'll grab them both and pull them down. The hair is a different beast. I'll grab all of it and pull it down together. Maybe we'll pull the sideburns down a little bit more. <clears throat> These guys will come down. Our roll or like our bulges in the hair will probably get a little more intense because it's now hanging down into his face. Um, all this is good, looking good. And these, these bumps here will probably mellow out too, just like they mellowed out when we looked up. All right, that looks, I'm sure it looks a little weird, but that's okay. Once we start to move other things around, like the mouth and the nose and the eyes and then the eyebrows, it won't look as weird. Up, down, there we go. All right, so that's how I do a head rotation. Um, takes a little playing around with to see to get it right. If there's anywhere that you have a keyframe that you don't need, just feel free to select it and delete it. You can see in the ears, I did not adjust the scale. And also in the eyes, I didn't adjust the scale. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible so that um, we don't have to uh, adjust too many things, right? You want to keep it very simple. So now, the cool thing is, we can select all of our shapes, all of our objects that have uh, keyframes assigned to them, and make sure each one of these slots has keyframes. If you get across to one and it doesn't have a keyframe like that, you need to figure out what keyframe goes there, okay? 
it has to have five keyframes in total. If you do not have keyframes, it, the plugin will not work for that shape layer. So you might move the head and everything is moving properly and you're like, wow, that looks great. Except for the mouth. The mouth isn't moving for some reason. Well, it's because you don't have five keyframes. Make sure you get those five keyframes. All right. Now that we've got those set up, we can actually create a joystick for the head. And let's see what happens. So we're going to select all of our objects for the head. We're going to come up here to this little square. And this is called create a new joystick. And we're going to click on it. And I'm going to call this one head rotate. Hit OK. I'm going to move my whole thing just upward. over the head. And now let's play around with it, see what happens. Actually, I'll move it over so we can see. Wow, we got head rotation. Oh man, that looks really good. The nose kind of does this weird little U thing, but I guess I expected it. But look at that, we got head movement. That looks so cool. Find your eyebrows. And we're going to come into the contents and we're going to expand both shape one and shape two. So the cool thing is, watch this. If I adjust my, key, my shape one into a more neutral position, which I think this was it, I can copy that keyframe and paste it to that one. And it updates it to mirror it perfectly. And that's because we've scaled the transform to a negative. It's the same exact shape, only the contents is backwards. So that's a cool thing we can do. Um, so we're gonna run through the same joysticks and sliders method that we just did with the head. So if this is my neutral pose for the eyebrows, if I move over one frame, this will be a new expression. And we're gonna get five expressions. So this is gonna be my kind of left of the joystick expression. And what I want to do is I'll make it be kind of like a, like a, not confused, but like, what are you talking about? Type expression. Okay, so we're gonna push some extremes and it'll be that one. The next, what we can do is right here, we'll paste origin and it'll, me, it'll paste it back. So next, this will be the right. And the right one, I think I'm going to make it more of a sad expression. We'll go kind of like that. And what I can do is copy this path and paste it to that path. Next, what we have is the up position. So if I paste origin, it'll give me that neutral pose. Oops. If I paste origin, it'll give me the neutral pose. And what I can do is pull these up really extreme. And don't even, like, don't be afraid to go too far because you can always um, tone it back on the control when you animate. So don't limit yourself to what you've rigged it at. Always give yourself more room with your rig so that you can have that flexibility when you animate. And then finally, we'll paste origin, and this will be my angry or frustrated face. So we'll pull it way down over the eye, maybe right there. We'll give a little curve inward. And I'm going to copy that and paste it. All right, that's looking really good. Okay, so. There is one thing that we need to do, and that is create a mask. So you can see that the eyebrows come down in front of the eyeball, but you can still see the eye. That's not normal. You don't wanna be able to see the eye. So we're gonna mask it out, and it's pretty simple. It's a pretty simple solution. So what we'll do is we're gonna create 
using the pen tool, we're gonna start up here at the forehead and we'll come across. Hold shift. I'm gonna scale that. I don't need a stroke. Then I'm gonna come down. Oops. Then I'll come down here, move it over. And then I'm going to follow the curve of my eyebrow. Just like so, follow the curve. This is gonna look messy, but that's okay because we will not see it. All right, that's looking good. So next what I've gotta do is I'm gonna move this down and I'll call this eyebrow mask. I'm going to expand the shape and I'm gonna key the path. And then as I scroll forward on my keyframes, I'm just going to keep the positions of the path in line with the eyebrow. Even if they go up above the eye and I don't have to worry about it, I'm still gonna move that because I wanna be safe. All right, and I'll move these down. And down, and then up, and then up. And this might make more sense in just a second. But essentially, we're just creating a shape layer only to hide the eyes when the eyebrows come down. Okay, and then once that's done, we can actually put this over, where are my eyes? We'll put these in front of the eyes, and then we're gonna go alpha mat um, inverted. And then we're gonna need to do one over the pupil as well. So we'll, for the pupil, we'll do alpha mat inverted. All right, you see what happened? Now we've taken away the shapes from behind the eye. And that's a real simple way to fix it. Now we have to make sure we remember, um, we have to remember where, what sh shape layers we have. So we have two masks, um, I thought it was three masks. No, I guess it's only two masks. Anyway, I'm gonna parent these two masks to the eyebrows, okay? And then next, what I'm gonna do is select the eyebrow. So now I have eyebrows and then two eyebrow masks selected. And I'm gonna come up here to... Next, what I want to do is I want to create, it's called a, um, a switch template. Now for me, switch, switch templates are extremely confusing. I still don't quite understand it. The way to do it is duplicate that ear, and I'll call this one rear. So left ear rear, and we'll put it behind the face. And then I'll select both of these guys. Control C. And then I'm gonna create a switch template and we'll call it left ear, hit okay. And what that does is when you hit okay, it creates a new composition. So go inside that composition and then control V your shapes. And we'll just, we'll center them both here. Uh, and what, what you see has happened is we've created two errors. The first error, error is in left ear. And because it has all this stuff tied up with a position, it's gonna give you an error because it can no longer read the joystick. And the second one is doing the exact same thing. Um, partially because we should have done this before we rigged up the head, but it's neither here nor there. So I'm gonna put the left rear ear behind the left ear. 
Now this is where it gets tricky. So you can basically view this composition as two things. Essentially, this composition is split into two. It's got one side, which is 100% um, opacity, and then it has the other side, which is 100% or I don't know, zero percent opacity. And depending on which ear goes on which side, will determine which ear is visible at which whatever given time. Um, and the problem is that it's not always so perfectly defined because you're dealing with objects such as a face, which is in a much different size or space than an object like a body would be. So sometimes it takes a little bit of playing with to, to actually get it. So if we come back into here and we go left ear to the head rotate um, joystick, what we can do is we're gonna, we're gonna bind it and we're gonna see what happens. And honestly, I do not know. Hey, look at that. It worked perfectly. Oh. Oh, I guess that ear needs to come up above everything else. So we're going to reposition this left ear. We'll just put it up on top of the body. All right, now let's rotate it back. And you can see that's where it switches. It switches right here, which is okay. It's not perfect. We'd want it to switch maybe more like right here. Or actually, you know what? I think it's a good place to switch. I don't know. Let's see. Let's go back inside and look at what we did. So we have the top left ear over to the left side of our composition and the left rear ear to the right side of our composition. But if we start to move these guys around, such as so, it's going to affect at which point the ear pops in front or behind. Okay, I, I think I like that better. So now what we can do is we can do the same thing to the right ear. I'm going to pull the right ear to the top. I'm going to duplicate it and then pull it this one to the bottom. And I'm going to call this one right ear rear. Okay, so if I select these guys, control C to copy and then create a new one called right ear. I'm creating a new uh, switch template. It's going to give me a new composition right here called right ear. If I go inside, control V, I'll get the same errors, which again is easy to fix. Just delete whatever script is on there. And then I'll center these guys out. Use your align tool to center. Okay, now this one's going to be backwards. So right ear on top will go into the right section and then the back will go into this section. Now let's bind everything together to the head rotate and let's see how it does. Hey, there it goes. So now we're getting some ears that switch in front and behind the face. It's perfect. I love it and it was pretty simple. All right, so everything is looking really good. Uh, and by the way, if, if you are having some trouble with it moving really quickly, um, something to know is if you edit purge all memory and disk cache. You might be running with a pretty full disk cache, so you can go ahead and empty it. Um, and that might make it a little quicker. It might not. It might freeze your computer, who knows. So I guess it made mine a little quicker, I don't know. Okay, what do we gotta do now? Now we have to do the pupils. So we have 
eyebrows, we have a head. Now I need to make the eyes move. The way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna come down to our pupils, expand these guys out, come back to our frame zero, and I'm going to move just the positions of these guys. There we go. Then if I hit U on the keyboard, it will bring up just the position. So if I move over one frame, I know that my eyes are gonna to move to the left. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna break it outside of the, the white part of the eye, and I'm gonna to have to mask it out later. And then next, these eyes are going to move in the opposite direction. Whoops. I'll put it over there. I'll just copy and paste. And then next, we're going to go up. And finally, we will go down. OK, that looks good. But I'm going to duplicate the eyes, move it above the pupils, Uh-huh, this might be our problem. So if we do alpha mat, you can see we have the eye masked out, but this is where the problem might occur. So we're gonna have to think about it. So if we have the eyes looking up and we put the eyes down, <laughs> you see what happens? Our pupils are still visible. And that's because I'm using the circle of the eye to be a mask for the pupil. So the way that this needs to happen is, aha, this is what we do. We'll move the eyes above the eyebrow mask, turn the eyebrow mask on. The eyebrow mask is going to have an alpha mat. Change the color of the eyebrow. You could leave it a darker color if you want. Um, Let me just make sure I'm doing this right. I'll do no track mat for now, just while I'm thinking about how to do this. Okay, I'm sorry, I've, I've gone off the deep end. I'm confusing the crap out of myself even, but you know, I know what I'm doing with these alpha mats, and you probably don't just yet, but let me walk you through exactly how I've layered, layered this. All right, so let's get rid of everything that is not the eye or the eyebrows. And ears. Okay, guys, let's take a look at what I've done. Okay, so, so basically, I'll start from the bottom up. Maybe I'm over explaining this, I don't know. So what do we have? First off, we have just the, eye, just the eyeballs, the whites of the eye. Next, we have the pupils, which is where we have all of our animation. It's the black part. Next, we have another white pupil on top. It's turned off so we can't see it, but it's there just to mask out the pupil. So I have an alpha mat. So that means that if the pupils go outside of the eye, they disappear. They're, they're bound only to the outer edges of the eye. All right, next we get into the eyebrow portion of this. So this is my eyebrow mask. The eyebrow mask is now only visible when the eyebrows come down over the eyes. 
And the way that that happens is that I have the eye whites on top of the eyebrow mask. And this is set up as an alpha mat. Okay, and this one is also turned off. So that means that I have one, two, three eye whites. Okay. Sorry if that over explained things for you, but it can be very complicated. It confuses me sometimes, but there you have it. An over explanation that either clarified things perfectly or really confused you. And I'm okay with either one. If you have questions, ask questions. Anyway, now we get into the, <laughs> the pupils. So selecting our pupil layer, the one with all the animation on it, we're gonna come up here, click the square, and we're gonna create a new joystick. And I'm gonna call this one eyes. Hit okay. And then I'm gonna scale this down to, what do we do the eyebrows, 20? And we'll do this one at 20 as well. Whenever I set up my, my rigs, I like to do things from the top down. So the first thing you'll hit is the eyebrows and you'll go down into the eyeballs and then you'll go into the mouth. And that's typically how I layer everything. Uh, and then we can select both of these and just center them to each other. Now let's look at the eyes. What happens when we move? Hey, that looks pretty good. We have eye movement. Perfect. That is exactly what we wanted. And now we are crushing it. Uh, if you don't like it to be darker, you can change um, your eyebrow mask color to whatever color you want. I'm just gonna do mine as the normal flesh tone. And you can see that we're kind of breaking through here. You can kind of see the whites of the eye. It's not a very clear picture. A way around that is come to the shape layer that your eyebrow mask is being alpha to and just expand the stroke. So if you expand the stroke, it essentially makes that shape bigger and it'll block out anything like that white that's coming through. And so let's add a blink to it. Uh, there's a few ways to do it. I'm actually gonna use joysticks and sliders again there's some kind of cool flexibility that we can add using joysticks and sliders. So I'm going to show you my method for that. Starting off, we're just going to grab a rectangle tool. We're going to draw out a shape, make sure it's big enough. We'll put it there and then I'm just going to move it upward like so. And then I'll add a stroke cause I'm using strokes. So we'll do a stroke of three, make that stroke black. Actually, no, my stroke is two, sorry. And then we're gonna fill it with his skin tone color. And then once we have that, you can control click your shape and go control D and then we'll move the other one down below the eyes. So right there. Next, what we are gonna do Oh, come on. Sorry, I added these onto my foot control. Let me go ahead and make those again real quick. Boop. All right, and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna call this blink. And then I'm gonna expand till I find the transform option within my rectangle and I'm going to key the position and I'll do the same thing to the other rectangle key the position now I can select my blink shape layer and hit U, and it gives me only those two keyframes so the way this is going to go this is my neutral pose for the blink then we're going to go to the left and to the left I want to do a full blink Okay, so I'm gonna move these into position like he has just blinked. 
that looks pretty good. And then for the right position of my controller, it's gonna be a blink as well. So I'm just gonna copy these keyframes to that. Now I'm gonna open the eyes up again and think about this. So if this is my neutral pose, my left and my right pose, this is gonna be my upward pose. And for the upward pose, I'm only going to do the bottom eyelid and I'll move the bottom eyelid maybe just above halfway over the eye. Then I'll paste back my neutral frames and this is my down pose. So I'm going to move the eyelid, the top eyelid down, maybe just, just um, past the 50% mark. With that done, we're gonna go back into our joysticks and sliders and we're gonna create a new joystick. And I'm gonna call this one Blink. So let's just see if this is working. So if I go over this way, the shapes come together. If I go this way, the shapes come together. And then if I go up, my bottom eyelid comes up. And if I go down, my top eyelid comes down. So that is exactly what we want. Next, I'm gonna scale this and put it into position. Um, I'm gonna put it on this side of his head. And you can put it wherever you want. It's really just a matter of what flows the best for you. So cool, now we have this blink shape. I'm gonna move my blink shape down towards where all my head pieces are. Uh, and the blink can go, we'll put it below the eyebrows. Okay, or actually we'll put it below, yeah, we'll, we'll put it below the eyebrows. And what we need to do is we're gonna find the eyes shape, we're gonna duplicate it, and we're gonna move it up above the blink, okay? Next, what we do is select our blink, come down to your toggle switch modes, click it, and we're going to create an alpha mat with the eyes. Uh, another thing we need to do is we need to attach this blink to the eyes so that when the head moves or rotates, the blink will move with it. So let's see if this works. So one, we'll start with the blink. All right, that looks really good. Another thing we can do to give it a little more depth to the eye is select your eye shape, which is your mask for your blink, and we're gonna expand the stroke. Let's go out just a little bit. And what's gonna be cool is that this line for the blink is going to expand past our eye and give it that little pop that it needs. It makes the eye feel like it's set back behind the eyelid. So that's a really cool um, thing that we can add to it. Next, I wanna make sure that this blink is moving with our head. So I'm just gonna move the head and that looks good. All right, I love it. Thanks for watching guys. I hope that you learned quite a bit from this. Um, but if you do wanna see the whole video on how I created the whole character, all the bells and whistles and everything that goes along with designing and rigging a character. On the professional level, click the link below and take my Skillshare course. Uh, you get a perk, I get a perk, and we're all happy. Thanks for watching, guys.